Tuesday, May 8th, 2018, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. I want to look at uh, free markets, small government, uh, non-intervention, laissez-faire, because that's, that's what I believe uh, drives uh, prosperity, uh, freedom. And uh, a lot of times when you discuss these kind of things with people who are more uh, pro-government and big government, uh, people who think uh, government is necessary for it, almost uh, everything uh, in a society, uh, they always ask me, oh, give me an example. There's never been a, you know, a country or place where they've had that. Uh, and that's wrong because you've had the United States you could argue in the in the 19th century is very laissez-faire, small government. But I have an example, and it's Hong Kong uh, since the 1960s. So I'll go over that. And the person or the man who uh, helped make uh, transform Hong Kong from a, a backwater uh, in the 50s and 60s to what it is today. Um, before that, of course, I'll just quickly go over uh, the markets and see what they're doing uh, this morning. It's uh, 8.20 a.m. London time. Uh, spot gold 13.14, so it's unchanged. Uh, the range has been 13.10 to 13.17. So a bit of uh, consolidation and range trading and holding, I guess, fairly well above that 13.10 level. Silver, uh, 16.50 right now, up 4 cents. Range has been 1643 to 1654. Uh, the Dow is up uh, 29, 24,380. Uh, I think yesterday, the yeah, from what I saw, the Dow was doing really well early on. It did finish up, but not as much as it was earlier in the day. Uh, we're still in that big consolidation uh, from the end of January we, when we had the top above 26,000. Uh, not out of the woods yet. Uh, S&P unchanged this morning, really. NASDAQ future up five points. The NASDAQ 100 future, 68.25. Currency-wise, fairly quiet as well. Uh, the pound is 135.64, up slightly. Still below key supports that we broke last week. That was around 136.50. I think the pound is uh, going to continue to go lower. Uh, this week, we've got the Bank of England meeting. Um, up until a few weeks ago, it was uh, the expectation was almost 100% that they would hike interest rates. But now it looks like they will not do anything. And we need to see also uh, what kind of voting they got. You know, how many people voted uh, for unchanged or if some vote, voted for a hike. And that will uh, probably be the next mover for the uh, for the pound. I think the meeting is on Thursday usually. Um, so the euro is at 119.20, unchanged as well. And the dollar is a little weaker against the yen, uh, below 109 now, 108.94, down about 0.15%. The other thing uh, that I noticed yesterday is that oil is uh, making new highs above traded above 70 70 yesterday I think the high was just below 71 right now uh, the WTI futures uh, the front month is trading right at right at seventy dollars uh, per per barrel um, is that mean commodities uh moving higher well I had a look at the the uh, old CRB index is called the continuous commodity index now and that's still very how can I say it's still not looking too bullish and it's still a very low level. So it has potential to go higher. So we need to keep an eye on commodities now as well. And if that starts moving higher, that could be what uh, gives gold and silver a bit more uh, upside. Um, yeah. So Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. I always uh, when I mention uh, how free markets and small governments are much better. Uh, for the economy and prosperity. I've said before that I, I'd rather have very small government um, and uh, freedom and the rule of law than I'd have, <laughs> rather than have political parties, all the politics. I think it's much better people concentrate on 
doing things, on business, on allowing people to prosper. Uh, and of course, people from the left or from even not even from the left, they say, oh, but you need government. Uh, you need government to regulate things. But uh, there is an example, and that's Hong Kong. Uh, and the, the, the guy who turned it around is a guy called John Cowperthwaite. He was, uh, I'll read a little bit about him here on Wikipedia. Uh, he was, of course, Hong Kong was a, a colony of the uh, UK. I think it was until 1997, if I'm not mistaken. Sir John James Cowperthwaite was a British civil servant and the financial secretary of Hong Kong from 1961 to 1971. His introduction of free market economic policies are widely credited with turning post-war Hong Kong into a thriving global financial center. So, um, and it goes on to say here, he arrived in Hong Kong in 1945 and was assigned to the Department of Supplies, Trade and Industry he was asked to find ways in which the government could boost post-war economic outlook, but found the economy was recovering swiftly without any government intervention. He took the lesson to heart and, and positive known interventionism became the focus of his economic policy as financial secretary. He refused to collect economic statistics to avoid officials meddling in the economy. Well, I agree with that. That's all, all the statistics. And we have that today, uh, economic statistics from government, and he refused to collect them. Uh, why do we need GDP or uh, CPI? It just, it's just a way for uh, politicians and governments to brainwash people into thinking that they should be in charge. And it says here, according to Catherine Schenck, Capperthwaite's policy helped it to develop from one of the poorest places, places on earth to one of the wealthiest and most pro prosperous. And I quote here, it says, low taxes, lax employment laws, absence of government debt, and free trade are all pillars of the Hong Kong experience of economic development. And it goes on to say, the economic freedom of the world uh, 2015 report ranks Hong Kong as both the freest economy in the world, a distinction it has held since the index be began uh, ranking countries in 1975 among the most prosperous. This is from the Cato.org uh, website. It says, Architect of Prosperity, Sir John Cowperthwaite, and Ma the Making of Hong Kong. Uh, it goes on to say, at the, sec at the end of the Second World War, Hong Kong lived up to its description as the barren island. It had few natural resources. Its trade and infrastructure lay in tatters. Its small manufacturing base had been destroyed and its income per capita was less than a quarter of its mother country, Britain. By the time the handover to Hong Kong of Hong Kong to China in 1997 it was one of the pro most prosperous nations on earth. By 2015, its GDP per capita was more than 40% higher than Britain's. Around the world, post-war governments turned to industrial planning, Keynesian deficits, and high inflation to stimulate their economies. The government of Hong Kong rejected this emerging global consensus. The colony's laissez-faire policies were implemented by a handful of civil servants, the most important of whom was John Cowperthwaite, deputy and then financial secretary of the colony between 1951 and 1971. He more he, more than anyone, shaped the economic policies of Hong Kong and set the stage for the territory's remarkable transformation. Our video showcased Maneri's examination of Cowperthwaite's life and ideas. So that's from the Cato Institute. There's a book, I'll put it in the link below. It's called Architect of Prosperity by Neil Maneri, um, the John Cowperthwaite and the Making of Hong Kong. That's a, I might have to buy it myself. I haven't read that one. There you go, Hong Kong, an example of uh, laissez-faire, free market, small government, uh, rule of law, and it's turned a country that was one of the poorest countries uh, in 1960 to one of the richest uh, nowadays. And uh, even though the Chinese now uh, have 
gotten Hong Kong back since 1997. I think they've kept it uh, pretty much, uh, they've left it uh, to the people in Hong Kong to run it. It is an autonomous uh, uh, region, a self-administered region, I think it's called SAR. So that's my example of how free market, uh, small government, uh, and rule of law can uh, help prosperity. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me also on Steemit, DTube, and on Twitter. And I'll talk to you later. Take care.